So I, ma I made this Lego gear coffee table a couple of months ago. And when I made it, I made three legs for it. And it works okay. It's, it's not, it's not really, t I mean, it's a little tippy, <laughs> but it works okay. But it was pointed out that the, the Lego gear is a, has a four, a pattern of four. So it, it sort of has quadrants. And I only made three legs. So, so that was always a little weird about it. So I thought it would be neat to make a fourth leg for the coffee table. And I didn't want to just make another similar leg because that, that's not really a project. That's just me getting something done. <laughs> so I've been wanting to learn sculpting in Blender and I thought it would be a good chance to make sort of a really fun, really different fourth leg for the Lego coffee gear. I thought it would be interesting to do a ball and claw leg, or foot I guess, and cut that on the fourth axis on the CNC based on a sculpted model out of Blender. So the first thing to do in Blender was to make the starting piece to start to sculpt on, sort of like getting out the block of clay. I wanted something that was at least somewhat in the shape of a leg to begin with. So I started with a sphere that would make the ball that the claw would hold on to. And from that, I pulled a leg out of that. Then you can sort of divide up the surface again, which then allows you to sculpt it, shape it. I had one last piece of maple that I used for the other legs, but I didn't have a piece that was really thick enough. So I cut a piece that I had into sort of big rough strips and I could glue those together into something I could make a big enough cylinder to then cut the leg out of. Making the leg was a lot of trial and error. I think this was my third or fourth attempt at actually trying to model this. But in kind of taking it slow and learning some of the different brushes you can use, I was able to get something that wasn't too bad. <laughs> I made sort of a reptile type foot with claws and then somehow I ended up with a more human-looking leg. <laughs> and I can clamp the final pieces together on my piece of stock. With this piece of maple, I wanted to cut a tenon into one end that would fit into the Lego table. So I needed to be able to clamp it to my vertical table on the CNC. So in doing that, I needed to have at least two parallel sides. So I got one side close enough that I could joint it. Then I cut off another side on the bandsaw. Then I jointed that face, then back to the bandsaw. And the leg's getting pretty close at this point. I kind of eyeballed the cuts at the bandsaw, but got them close enough to where I could joint and plane them. I had a cylinder in my model that was the size of the cylinder I was making with the maple, so I could make sure the leg was going to fit within that cylinder. Then the last thing on the piece of maple was to plane that third side, and I could get the two parallel sides that I need or at least two flat sides. I need something that will clamp against the vertical table and something I can put the clamps against. <laughs> I thought about making the leg more detailed, but I knew the CNC bit wasn't gonna be able to get into every little tiny bit of detail. So I left it somewhat sort of soft and curvy, I guess. <laughs> And I trimmed up the ends on the maple. Then I could cut that tenon onto the end of the maple. And I refined the ball and claw. And I made sure the tenon would fit in the Lego gear tabletop. And it did. Then I can take the piece of maple off. and I needed to find the center on the piece of maple on the other end. 
so I could make a small hole for the tailstock to hang on to on the lathe. So on the lathe now, I want to turn the maple into a cylinder. And this will be the cylinder I put onto the CNC. And it'll give me something to work with to cut with the CNC. And this is a lot quicker to turn this material off by hand on the lathe than it is to try and do it with the CNC. I think I was shooting for four and a half inches, a little more than 100 millimeters in diameter. I cut some sort of reference spots on the cylinder and then I could kind of take off the material between those. It doesn't really have to be perfect, I just wanted it to be somewhat close. I didn't want any surprises when the bits started going on the CNC machine. <laughs> I made the model I was working on red or a color with, with a little bit of shine or I guess less roughness to it just so I can see it better on the screen. It helps when the lighting is a little better or a little more defined on the model, you can see the three-dimensionalness of it on the flat screen. So I, I kind of made a few little screw-ups on this. One, I used the drawing file to cut the tenon from the Lego coaster I had made. And I think when I did that, I used a quarter inch bit and I used the same cam file and except I had a half inch bit to cut this. So I, I cut off too much and it was too small. And once something's too small, you, you really can't do a whole lot. <laughs> so I, I, I cut that off and I, I recut this one, which now fits and I, I changed the bit size. The other thing I did, which is a little bit of a pain now, is I, I should have thought about how this was going to attach to the CNC fourth axis chuck. I thought I would either just put this in or I would attach my little metal adapter plate to this. But where the screw holes are in this are a little too far out, so there isn't a whole lot of wood to attach those screws to. What I really should have done is maybe made this a little taller and then cut these notches for the jaws on the chuck into this piece when I was cutting out the tenon. It would have gone really, it would have been a simple extra step and then this would just be ready to go on the CNC. But because I didn't do that, I, I cut this piece out, which I'm going to now attach, I think with screws, to the end of the tenon, and then this will give me a place for the chuck to attach. It'll work, it just took a little extra project to make this piece. <laughs> I drilled holes in my wooden chuck adapter, and I just put four screw holes in and then that can just be screwed to the end of the piece of maple. I did drill through those into the maple, so there's a, there's a hole for the screw to go into. Then I can put the piece of maple on the CNC. I first did a roughing pass. I've been playing around with Rhino Cam, and that seems to work pretty well. So with the roughing pass, it did a bunch of step-down levels. So it's really the same as doing a flat three-dimensional piece. It's just wrapped around a cylinder. And I think the roughing pass was gonna take close to an hour, but at about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, it got to a point where it was really only doing the area sort of in front of the shin. So it was running the bit over the whole piece, but it was really only cutting where the shin is. It's sort of the, the deepest area. So I stopped the job and then I redefined sort of where it should cut. And I had it just cut that patch over the shin and that went a lot quicker sort of to, to finish up that part. I could have just let it run, but I'm just kind of wearing out the Z axis doing that and it would just take a while. So in just doing this small section, I can speed the whole process up quite a bit. And once the roughing pass was done, I could do a finishing pass. 
So the roughing pass I did with a half inch flat bit and the finishing pass I did with a angled bit. I think it's like two and a quarter degrees. So it's just a little bit of an angle and it goes from a quarter inch in the collet down to an eighth of an inch at the point. And it's a ball nosed bit at the point. I think I did a 20% step over. So it's moving 20% of the, of the diameter of the bit on each pass. And I think I could have gone a little lower and made the surface a little finer. And I can take it off. And it actually went surprisingly well. I didn't really have any problems cutting this. Now I want to put it on the lathe. The first thing I want to do is just do a little bit of sanding to get the little fuzzy bits off. I kind of liked the tool paths in it. It sort of gives another level of texture to it. And I'm kind of too lazy to try and really sand it down to a smooth finish. <laughs> then I need to turn off a little bit at both of the ends. I cleaned up the bottom of the ball. And this is where I'm going to make it the right length to work with the table. It needs to be the length of the other legs. I could have just done this on the CNC, but doing it this way kind of lets me sort of do it by hand and kind of sneak up on that length and make sure I get it right. So I cut the tenon a little bit longer, which gave me the right length of leg and foot. I think it's 16 and a half inches. And since I had the tenon right there, I could just kind of add to its length by hand. I can take the chuck interface piece off. I cut the little tab off the foot on the bottom of the ball, I guess. And I can make sure this fits. I should have made sure it fit before I cut the piece off the bottom, but it ended up being okay. And I made the tenon a little shorter. And I cut the rest of that off on a bandsaw. Then I could sand the two ends. And it seemed to work. And it still stood up on its own. <laughs> now I can put finish on. And luckily I can put it on the lathe to do the finish. I'm just using the lathe as a stand. It's just a way to hold it. And I'm putting shellac on. I think that's what I put on the rest of the table. So that's what I'll use here. And the lathe was nice just to, to hold the piece so I, I could get it all the surfaces but not have to touch it. And that dried pretty quickly. And I can take it inside. So the way I had the legs when there were three legs, I didn't really have them evenly within the pattern of the gear. I had them so that they were spaced as far apart as possible. So I had to move the three existing legs. And of course that takes a minute. <laughs> and I need to tighten them up a little bit with the shims. And I got the new leg in. I didn't plan for this to have a Halloween feel, but it's kind of turned out that way. <laughs> now we have one slightly different leg. And I'm not sure anyone else in the family likes this. <laughs> I think it's cool. I kind of like the juxtaposition of the biological leg with the industrial top and the simplified other three legs. I mean, it kind of has that Lego feel where you've just kind of put pieces together. I think that's what I like about it. Thanks for watching.